Great. Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, so yeah, today I'm going to talk about the GA4GH, uh, specifically the cloud work stream and the emerging standards from uh, that work stream for genomics in the cloud. Oh, good, it's working. Um, <clears throat> so we heard a little bit about the Global Alliance uh, before, um, but I just want to kind of recap uh, what the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health, or GA4GH, um, is. So the GA4GH's uh, mission is to enable genomic data sharing for the benefit of human health. Um, uh, GA4GH is a policy framing and technical standards uh, setting organization uh, seeking to enable responsible genomic data sharing within a human rights framework. Uh, so I'm particularly interested in the technical standards um, setting component of this, um, and I am the co-lead along with David Glazier from Verily of the GA4GH cloud work stream. Uh, the cloud work stream is one of many work streams within the GA4GH, uh, but we focus on creating specific standards for uh, sharing and executing and containerizing portable workflows and accessing data uh, across cloud environments. And what we do is we work with many driver projects like Genomics England, the Human Cell Atlas, ICGC Argo, and many others to develop, enhance, test, and actually use the Cloud Workstream APIs. So before I dive into the details of the specific APIs that the Cloud Workstream is working on, I want to take a step back and, and tell you a little bit about the motivation of why we're doing this. And so I think um, PCOG, or the Pan Cancer Analysis of Whole Genomes Project, is a really good project to il illustrate the utility of the APIs that we're working on. So this is a, a volunteer project a collaboration that started more than four years ago. The idea was to have um, uh, about 2,500 cancer donors corresponding to about 5,000 uh, whole, um, whole genomes uh, that needed to be aligned and variant called with a common pipeline. The challenge was that this data, this ICGC data set, uh, was actually spread across the world. So we had eight storage sites all over the world and because it was a volunteer organization, a volunteer effort, we had uh, 14 cloud and HPC environments all around the world that donated the compute necessary to do the alignment and variant calling. So as a consequence, each of these sites was its own little snowflake. They were all distinct and different and had different interfaces, and it was a very complex undertaking to interact with each of these compute sites. Altogether, it took about two plus years to do the alignment and variant calling in this project. So the goal of the cloud work stream then is to take a step back from examples like PCOG and to identify lessons learned. On the left-hand side, we see kind of what it was like to work in PCOG, where as a researcher, we're taking our workflow and having to retool or rebuild the workflow to fit it into each of these distinct environments. On the right-hand side, though, is really applying the lessons learned from PCOG, which is we needed ways to containerize up, to package up and make our workflows themselves portable. We needed ways to send the algorithms to the data to actually execute using a common API across the various environments of PCOG. And we needed to be able to access data in the same way, regardless of environment that we're working in. And so that's really what the cloud work stream is all about, is moving in that direction of making standardized APIs for all of those activities, making it much easier to move algorithms around to where the data resides in many different compute environments. So PCOG was a great example of why we started building uh, these APIs in the cloud work stream. I don't think PCOG is particularly unique. Uh, if we take a look at the data sets that are becoming available over the next five years, this is just a, a peek at various NIH data sets that we looked at for one of our grant proposals. Back of the napkin, it looks like in the next five years or so, we're going to see 50 petabytes plus of genomic data be available on commercial cloud environments. So in the future, we really need to be able to have and need to be able to facilitate users using data in a variety of cloud-based environments and being able to do computes across data sets like these are going to be extremely important. So what did we actually built in the cloud work stream? Uh, we have four distinct APIs um, that we're working on in the cloud work stream. At the highest level, we have workflow sh a workflow sharing API that lets us uh, share workflows from institute or researcher to researcher. 
Uh, we have a workflow execution um, API that allows you to send the algorithm to a remote compute environment. Uh, we have a lower level execution API that allows you to execute individual tasks from a workflow. And finally, we have a data access API that allows you to access data uh, in a consistent way, uh, regardless of underlying storage. So I'll dive into a little of the details of each of these and kind of give you an idea of where we stand uh, for each of these APIs. So that high-level tool registry service or terse API is an API that allows you to list and search and register WIDL or CWL described tools and workflows. So this allows you to essentially publish your workflows in a way that allows other researchers or other compute systems to get access to the workflow, to search for the workflow, uh, to retrieve the workflow definition. So we're currently on a 1.0 release for the schema. Uh, the GitHub uh, page is located there. Um, but in terms of implementations, we have a very high quality implementation called DocStore, which you can get to at docstore.org, that implements the Terse API standard. Uh, the next service that we're working on is the workflow execution service. This allows you to take a WIDL or CWL based workflow uh, and send it to a compute environment in a cloud agnostic, a platform agnostic way. Um, TESS or task execution service is very similar to this. And the idea is as a researcher, I can take my workflow definition, parameterization, send that to a WES endpoint. Behind the scenes, there's a platform or environment specific implementation for running that workflow. And what I get back is a status URL that lets me retrieve the output um, information. So this is the first API from the cloud workstream that's actually officially a 1.0 API and endorsed by the GA4GH. So we're an official GA4GH uh, standard now for WES, which is very exciting. And then the final API that we're working on is the data repository service or DERS. This is a cloud agnostic way of looking up a particular ID and finding uh, the copies of data that are accessible in one or more cloud environments and ultimately being able to read or write those data blobs using things like signed URLs or temporary credentials. So this DIRS service is very helpful for people building portals to browse data across multiple uh, data repositories. But I think what's, what's probably more important is workflow execution engines being able to use the DIRS API to pull input files and push output files. And this is something that's a nascent standard that we're working on uh, right now. So in terms of where do we stand right now, um, we're very happy that um, the workflow execution service has been approved by the GA4GH and is an official standard. We want to do the same thing for the tool registry service and the data repository service in 2019. We have spent a lot of time building compliance testing frameworks for the tool registry service and the workflow execution service and we'd like to do the same thing for task execution service and data repository service in 2019. And we have a high quality implementation of Terse via DocStore uh, that's ready for people to use right now. Uh, in 2019, we want to see, I'm hoping Cromwell as our first high quality implementation of the workflow execution service. And we're hoping for a similar outcome with uh, DERS for data uh, repository service. And we have multiple projects that are using DocStore right now and, and as, a, uh, a, uh, as an extension using Terse as well. Uh, we have many projects that are prototyping and testing WES, TESS, and DERS uh, right now. We've had successful tests with the NIH Data Commons, with NHLBI Data Stage. We've seen uh, traction on the Elixir Cloud uh, front. So we're really excited to see this, but we're hoping for uh, production use of those APIs in 2019 and beyond. So in terms of the things that we can work on for the hackathon, there's a whole host of things. There's lots of conversations happening right now on our mailing list about possible projects. I think we could work on WES implementations. We could work on API schema definitions for the data repository service. We could also work on uh, shims to other workflow repositories to speak terse. There's quite a few things that we could, we could work on, and I'm excited to work with you guys on that. Uh, for more information, see our website for GA4GH, as well as the cloud workstream. Uh, website at ga4gh.cloud. Our Google group is very active right now, coming up with ideas for this hackathon. And for DocStore, check out docstore.org. And I'm happy to answer questions over Slack or email. So thank you very much.